Welcome and thank you for participating in this virtual open house for the Dakota County School Travel Safety Assessment Project. While we would like to be getting your input in person, unfortunately from a public health standpoint that isn't currently advisable and so we are using this online approach. Your input is very important to this project, so we hope you will spend a few minutes to learn more about the project in this presentation and then give us your observations and your questions. In this presentation, we will provide an introduction to the School Travel Safety Assessment Project and why it's being completed. We'll provide an overview of safety considerations at schools and talk in more detail about what we will be studying as part of this project and the timeline for the study process. Finally, we'll let you know how you can get involved. This is a key component of the project and the reason for this open house and presentation. We'll let you know where and how you can provide input to this project. There are nearly 50 schools adjacent to the county and state highway systems in Dakota County. The school travel safety assessment will focus on safety issues near these schools that are next to county roads and state highways with a focus on safety for those who walk and bike to school. The assessment will develop recommendations for improvements that take a comprehensive approach to safety by identifying solutions for engineering, education, and enforcement that Dakota County and its partners can implement consistently throughout the county. Dakota County and MnDOT are committed to providing a safe environment for all people who use the transportation system. School zones are a priority for safety because they involve younger pedestrians, bicyclists, and new drivers. Dakota County and MnDOT have previously worked with various schools in the county to address safety concerns in school zones. Through this work, we have heard common themes about school travel along and across higher speed roadways. We also have recognized that similar conditions exist at multiple school sites, and there is a need to address safety consistently and proactively. This project has a proactive approach to safety. This means making improvements at locations that have safety risks, even if no crashes have occurred at that location. The recommendations will involve not just engineering or things you see on the roadway, but also look at improvements to policy, education, and enforcement, all of which are important contributors to safety. The project will also seek to institute consistency in treatments for similar conditions across the county, creating specific criteria for the application of safety treatments and seeking to create consistency among schools and school districts. Finally, an implementation plan will be developed that will focus on both improvements that can be implemented quickly in 2020 and other improvements that will need additional time and planning for implementation. Safe Routes to School programs use the six E's of safety, equity, education, encouragement, enforcement, engineering, and evaluation. Equity in Safe Routes to School seeks to benefit all demographic groups with additional attention towards addressing barriers and ensuring health and safety for lower income students, students of color, and others that face disparities. Education includes activities that teach students bicycle, pedestrian, and traffic safety skills, and also includes classes like driver education. Encouragement involves events and activities that generate interest and excitement around walking and biking to school. Enforcement is part of Safe Routes to School because it is used to deter unsafe behavior and encourage compliance with traffic laws like speed limits. Engineering is the component that many people associate with safety because it is the most visible in the form of infrastructure around schools. Evaluation is used to identify the underlying safety issues and the effectiveness of the changes or improvements implemented as part of the other five E's. This project will focus on three E's in particular, engineering, education, and enforcement. Education programs can have long lasting effects because they teach students lifelong skills like bicycle handling and maintenance, as well as how to safely walk and bike on the roadways near their school. 
Education can also be used to teach parents and other drivers how to drive more safely around pedestrians and bicyclists. The primary goals of enforcement programs are to increase awareness of laws that are designed to protect people walking and bicycling, such as stopping for people in crosswalks, and to improve driver behavior like slowing vehicle speeds. Engineering deals with the built environment and projects that work to create places to walk or bike and improve the safety and accessibility of walking and biking. The photos on the slide show examples of marked crosswalks, a pedestrian hybrid beacon, a school speed zone, and a pedestrian crossing median refuge. The process for this project involves five main elements. First, we have identified the pre-kindergarten through 12th grade schools that are next to county roads and state highways. For this study, we are only considering schools that are directly next to county roads and state highways. While there are many additional schools that are nearby or influenced by these highways, these schools will not be considered explicitly in the study. However, the study recommendations will identify conditions and criteria for improvements so that they can be applied to any school in Dakota County where those same conditions exist, even if the school was not part of this study. Next, for the list of schools identified as being on county roads and state highways, we are currently collecting transportation and school data that will help us to capture the walking and biking conditions at each school. We will also use this data to select a smaller but representative group of schools for more detailed evaluation. The detailed evaluations are used to develop recommendations for common issues, such as crossings of multi-lane roadways and high speeds near schools. By studying these common issues in detail, recommendations will be identified for all schools in the study based on the conditions that are similar to the schools that were evaluated in detail. Finally, an implementation plan will be created that identifies both short-term improvements that can be made in 2020, as well as longer-term improvements that need additional time for planning, funding, or implementation. The map on this slide shows the 49 schools identified for the study based on being next to a county road or state highway. The 49 schools include all grade levels, are located throughout the county, and include both public and private schools. Of the 10 school districts in Dakota County, nine are represented by at least one school in this study. This graphic shows the planned schedule for the project. We are currently in the early phase and are conducting the first round of community engagement, as well as collecting data and identifying schools for detailed evaluation. This schedule will allow some recommendations to be implemented as early as fall 2020 as part of the new school year. However, this is a draft schedule and it will be adjusted as needed due to the effects of COVID-19, remote learning, and other factors. We will also adjust the schedule as needed to make sure there is enough time to capture community feedback on the project. For this project to be successful, we need your input. Head to the project webpage on the Dakota County website, which is linked on this slide, and you can provide feedback via an interactive map and a survey. On the map, you can draw your existing travel routes and identify positive elements along your route and issues or barriers you encounter. The survey is geared towards parents and provides an opportunity to tell us how your students travel to and from school and why you choose those ways to travel. We will use this information to identify what is working or not working as you travel to and from school so that we can identify needs and develop recommendations. You can also choose to receive future updates on the project via email. Later in the study, which is currently anticipated for September, we will hold a second round of community engagement to gather feedback on the draft recommendations of the study. This will be an opportunity to provide your input on the proposed improvements. If you have additional questions, 
you can reach out to the Dakota County Traffic Engineer via the email shown here on the slide or through the feedback form on the Dakota County website. Thank you for your attention and your participation in this project.